I are starting. It says we're live. What's up, fish tank people? I hope this is live. Dustin's fish tanks bringing it to you on a Thursday night with Mr. Lucas Bretz. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. And I hope the delay is not too bad as I'm going to keep plowing through this because I can't tell if we're real time or not, which is kind of part of the fun. Before I, before I give you, I was thinking tonight before, I want to give you the formal introduction here. And the only way I could introduce Lucas Bretz, because him and I share some musical taste, was everybody just throw your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. Because if you like fish and shrimp and all that pimp sh everybody let me hear you say, oh, yeah, yeah. Lucas oh, Bretz, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, when, you, when you, I found out you were an outcast, I was like, it's over, man. So what's up, man? How you living? Living good, living good. Gotta love Outcast, man. Him and I, Quim and I. Dude, that's the they're the best, man. I did like a long time ago. I did like a, I think I started like a video with like forty five minutes of Outcast, and people were like, "What is wrong with him?" I was <laughs> like, Outcast is the bomb. What do you want to do? So, oh man. So, for people who don't know you, man, introduce everybody knows who you are. But introduce yourself anyway, like they don't. All right, for those who don't know who I am, I'm L R Bretts. AKA LRB Aquatics, keep a lot of fish tanks. I was at like 200 or so and then had some blowout, like two or three. So I'm just barely touching that right now. But wait, yeah, wait. keep fish, shrimp, plants, and all that. How many tanks you at now? Uh, I was at 200. I don't know if I'm still around there. I got to do a recount because it had a couple bust out on me. Oh, man. So I, uh, I, was, with, uh, I was with a dude. He had the same beard as you, only he was older. His name was Tory Brown. He said, "When you start counting tanks, they'll admit you if you get like over a hundred. So like you gotta like, <laughs> not count them." Is the well, they gotta catch me first. Ah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, and I, and I, you're fat. You run too, aren't you? You're a runner, right? Oh yeah, it was, it's in the genes. My grandpa was a runner. My dad's a runner. This, this ain't fish related, but I don't care, man, because very few people around in, in the fish biz are runners. What do you run? What do you do? I used to do the four hundred in high school. That was my main one, 1600 relay, hurdles. I even did shot put. <laughs> wow, dang, dude. See, I yeah. run like a duck, man. I just recently figured out how to actually run. So I run like distance, man. That's my thing. I did a half marathon at the Red River Gorge this summer. And then for my birthday a couple of days ago, I was hitting up the Red River Gorge. And I did probably, I don't know, four or five miles. I like to get them them lungs pumping, get that going. So, Yeah, I saw that video the other day. You went out and ran in the cold. I was like, this dude's insane. Dude, this stuff's paradise, man. Paradise. Everybody, everybody's like all watching us on YouTube. They're all missing it. They need to be going out in nature and, and getting it getting it figured out. So Truth. With, Truth. Uh, with that said, brother, you got 100-some tanks. Um, I've heard you be called the Shrimp Jesus before. <laughs> what's, up with, what's up with Shrimp Jesus, bro? Yeah, they gave me a few names. I got like shrimp messiah, fish messiah, shrimp Jesus, plant Amen. Jesus, moss God, all kinds of stuff. These are these are uh, reverend. Some names. call me Lord. Ain't nobody putting Jesus and Dustin together in the same name. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, I think it's the hair and the beard. Ah, okay. Just kind of goes in with it. Got that yeah. messiah, that it's kind of blasphemy, but no, no, it's, it's still all, flattery. It's all fish. That's fun, dude. Heck yeah. Yeah. So, but the shrimp thing, though, man. I met you at uh, the aquatic experience couple years back uh two or three years back and uh i want to start there man i'm gonna bring the guns out you got any of that, you got any of that hardware around you uh, as far as the shrimp yeah man i know you want some awards yeah you want to see some shrimp oh you want to see I'll the see hardware them. you want to see, see the metals one man i'll, I'll show them to you i tell you what they're wrapped and, up and right and now i don't even hang them or nothing. while you're fetching that i want to give people the story thank you everybody for in here and those of you just joining if you don't mind sharing subscribing that whole thing it helps us out so uh, if you could hit the, you know, hit the little share and say woohoo and do all that chat and fun, that's uh, that's as close to an actual conversation as I get, with, uh, with the exception of this. So I uh, I actually came in and I bombed in on his place. So I've been to his fish room. So it's exciting for me to uh, to really talk with you guys about it because I know it pretty well. As I move the camera, so you can't see the algae that's going on over here. But uh, I, I dropped in on his place, and uh, we're going to talk more about his setup in a minute. So I got a pretty good knowledge of what he's got going on. I'm going to move my uh, – I'm going to plug one of my lights in here. All right. You want to see the hardware, huh? Yeah, man. I think people need to know. You, I yeah, I haven't, I've actually had it wrapped up in this towel. I don't 
I haven't really put it anywhere yet. But this was the first year I did it, international award. So I got a second place in category two, first place in category one, which were the only categories I entered in. Then this was last year, which I don't even think I showed anybody this year. So I got third place in category two and third place in category one, which were the only ones I actually entered in. This one's kind of funny, the uh, third place in category two, because I won that with a blue dream call. Yeah. Like nobody's ever seen. I just kind of made up a name for it and, and actually won an award. I wasn't even expecting it. What was it called? I called it a Marauder. Marauder? What's that? Yeah. From? What's the? I don't know. It just sounded good. It was kind of like it had different colors, like black and blue, and like a red to it, kind of like an orangish tinge. It was is weird. I don't know. I thought it sounded good. That's cool. You know how they're always making up names for them, anyway. Oh, dude! When I used to get boosted, man, they would come in with a name of like where it was from, and I was just like, you know, this is just this is mini teal boost. This is MTB. This is like it's just you know. Name it, name it, whatever it is. I'm going to adjust my light real quick here because I'm kind of like flickering. No problem. It's like, in it's like there's lots of people in the chat here. Oh, a lot man. of awesome people. All these good fish tank people on Thursday night, dude. They love yeah. it. It's a big shout out to all you fish tank people. Dude, I still can't believe that the, the fish tank, like just people, man, just watching fish tank stuff on YouTube. I can't believe how it's grown for everything for real. Like it, it blows my mind still. Like, I just, I can't imagine, like, how many people both have tanks, what their setups are, and then, like, the amount of people doing so much crazy stuff. Everybody's got their own little vein. Um, and, dude, I want to I wanna talk, since I've seen your, since I've, so shout-outs to all the, all y'all Fish Tank Universe people. Um, I want to talk, though, about what I really like, as I move this here, with your setup, man. Because you have... And I've seen some fish rooms, man. You have one of the uh, – I'm trying to sit up to get this light here. You have one of the the cleanest uh, – like, I don't want to say, like, not that your tanks were dirty. They were, they, they were clean. But, like, the cleanest lines and the eye for design with the way you put those tanks in there that I don't know if it's if it's represented well in, in videos because there's there's something to be said about – like what's in your tank and the Europeans do this better than the Americans in my humble opinion. But there's also something to be said about like how your spaces are designed. And dude, I got to hand it to you, man. Your stuff was real clean. Like every tank was like all like that one rack you were building wasn't even done. was real slick. So what do you, what, when you walk into a room, like do you look at it a certain way and are like, I can't only put this many here. Or has you got any like philosophies on the way you set up, not the actual in the tanks, but like the way everything is set up around it. Well, it all comes down to necessity. So I was always trying to cram tanks into a space, and it's just finding the best design to fit that many tanks within that area that it would come to instead of, oh, I got this whole room to work with. It just kind of grew up that way. And then having a degree in design, that helped a lot. Oh, for real? You have a degree? Yeah. I was, I was, sorry, I was, I was peeling that. I didn't know that. Oh, no fooling. You got yeah, I went to ITT Tech for a couple yeah. years Got a bachelor's. What kind of design? Uh, graphic design, but we covered architectural, mechanical, engineering, multimedia, all kinds of stuff. That's tight, dude. Yeah, because one of the things I remember when I went into your fish room, um, I really liked the one back, uh, the one back room, the way that the racks were set sideways. But it was done right because, um, and I'm going to take a shot at myself, like it was done right because the way you had it, set up is everything was hidden and everything was real clean so you talk about necessity but um i saw it more like there was a there was a design element present there and uh so like from for example we're talking about racks here so like mine i got them now look i, I live with jungle josh so like <laughs> you know, it's all about just like getting it out and getting it drained so uh, so for for example for mine and this is part of a feng shui thing that i don't have that you do have in your room now, grant you, it's different spaces. This is your basement, and mine's out in the greenhouse where I can get the floor wet. But I have mine, the bulkheads drilled on the front. And I think people, uh, well, like, it, it, it instantly kills what you're looking at in there. Now, when I'm draining, like, I got tanks with, like, water this low or, like, this high, and I want to, like, rip it out, and I want to drain a 20-gallon and get it two inches tall and grow some foreground plants, like, that's no problem. But from a design perspective, it's not there. 
one of the things that I love that you did is not only do you not have the big drill in the front, but you got a whole setup from behind. So can you talk to people about, or, or maybe possibly show if one of those tanks is, is connected up? Because the way you did it is both hidden and then what you can see looks real sharp. So can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Are you talking about like the water system that comes in? That's exactly what I'm talking about. I tell you what, I'll give you a little tour here into the main fish room. I'll just there flip this camera around. I, is this the room you were talking about, like the that's main the fish room? room? Yeah, yeah. Believe it or not, these racks were actually built at two different times. So I actually built this first and then actually built on top of it. There's actually metal rods in these racks holding those up together on that rack. All right, now I'm going to interject something here. Now, you, everybody keep it keep it on there because I want to talk about something I, I, that I noticed. All right. Now, everything in here, folks, is everything in there is black. It's all painted. It's all sharp. It's all it's all sharp looking. You got two separate racks, but they're at the same level, so there's a design element there. And then um, I think those the uh, the whole I know the whole upper rack's at the same level, and then you're slightly off on the bottom. But I mean, for the most part, it's a real like symmetrical line, if you will. Like it's a real, a real sharp thing. And then the other thing I want to talk about was your water system. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, I can show you the water system. So what I did is I actually plumbed up every single tank to the house line. And I used a PEX system to do that. So all I had to do is turn on the water there and I add water. That's easy, easy peasy. Now I still like to do hoses as far as maintaining the tanks because you can get all that extra algae detritus and all that stuff out a lot okay. easier than like say if you have it drilled you're not getting that stuff out without a hose boom you're only cleaning the water column so your system is a fill only system and you drain with your own siphon externally correct correct Do I have that right all right so you don't have a yeah. drain out part of it no, what I actually use, I'll show you real quick, is this tub. What do y'all think about that? Is it like that? Can I get a like for that? How fat is that? So I keep that? a tub here, big pump in it, garden hose, and then that pumps it into the bathtub. And that's how wow. I get discharged all the water. So, I, I mean, I run all kinds of different size hoses. Like for my 125 rainbow fish here, mm -hmm. this tank, I actually wow. use like an inch hose. So it blasts the water out of there real fast. You got yourself a black mamba, huh? Yeah, oh yeah, a few of them. Yeah. Now, is that not use ridge? That's not ridge, though. That's a smooth pipe. Yeah, that's actually PVC uh, vinyl tubing, which is uh, so much cheaper than, like, your nylon and everything else. Really? Yeah, way cheaper. Really? Yo, you ever messed with any of those? You should get one of those 25-foot uh, pond. Uh, I use the rib. <laughs> I use rib, baby. Um, the, uh, the rib, the rib, like, uh, pond tubes. Yeah. The gray tubes. stuff. No, nah, no, nah, they're black, but they got the, they're, they're more rigid, but they're not as, they're not, they're, they're more flexible than the vinyl. They're probably not as strong, but yeah. Look at those next time you need a 25 footer, they were like 18 bucks. They weren't bad. That's they're not too bad. Three, three quarter inch, but no, so you're using the, the, you can't bend those that great then. Yeah. It costs, well, no, actually it can. If you wanted to get a bend, you can heat them up too. Ah. Uh, like get some hot water and it'll make it'll take the uh, integrity out of it actually. Gotcha. So they bend and flex really well, and they won't catch stuff like the rib hoses will. Uh, that's so. Uh, let me tell you about them. Them uh, those uh, red tiger lotus bulbs, man. Those things, dude. I have them. We'll be rolling, man. Josh will be out in the greenhouse, dude. You talk about the flow. He'll be out there. He'll be like hundred miles an hour, and man, he'll hit one uh, one red tiger lotus bulb, and we got three quarter inch uh, tube. And then we got the bulb, the barb fitting in there every time. Boop, stops it. He's just like, man, fuck. You know, I'm like, you know, <laughs> dude, when you get in a groove and you clean a tank. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, it's like you got to have to take out abuse or something. Well, you got, you know, when you're in, you're in the zone and you got, I mean, you got 100 plus tanks, dude. So you know how it is. When you're in the, when you're in the flow, like, and you're like, I got this one. Then I know that one's coming and that one's filling. So I got to get, it's like a, it's like a dance, you know. So when you get out of the dance, it's, it's, it's bad news. So. Oh, yeah, for uh, sure. I didn't think about that with the, with the. The flat or the the vinyl. So, I actually need one of those red lotus bulbs in my fish room. I've been wanting one of those for a while. I got a tiger lilies going right now, but oh, see this sucker, dude. This yeah, that's back nice. Here is my my original one, man. And uh, I've actually got uh, I actually got two varieties coming in, and uh, I'm real pumped about it. So yeah, I'll hook you up with some bulbs. And uh, the bulbs are 
Dude, the ball that this is it's a fun plant, man. You don't have any lotus? I thought no. I don't. I don't. I've always wanted one, but I thought they always needed soft water. No, nah, man. They got the they got the Africa water. They like the harder water. Oh, do they? Okay. Yeah, they don't they don't mind it. And then they like a little bit of iron. But there's my Nanai Angel. He 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 comes out right here. His brother died the other day. Mm. His brother that he beat up. But uh, so Cain and Abel. So <laughs> yeah, dude, he took him out. He's done. He took him out early too. Right when they first got out of the box, he was like, "You can't live with me." Like we, we're over. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lose this thought though. Check it out. I want to. I want. I was talking about the design and I was talking about the flow. Now look, you could have gone to Jimco and bought those black, uh, like plastic, uh, PVC end caps, but you didn't do that. You spent the extra cheddar. And can you show the? Uh, I'll reference Outcast again. The Chrome, the Chrome Cadillac wheels are. The, the, the yeah, chrome, yeah, I can uh, show you the Chrome here. Yeah, that thing. Those are tight, man. Because his stuff was, uh, and it's like one of those things where you, if you weren't into it, you wouldn't notice it, you know. But these are cool yeah. looking. Everybody can see that. I'll shut up. Yeah, it's these stainless steel mesh intakes that I have at the end here. Yeah, those are. Sexy. And they stay clean. They filter out stuff. I actually use those so I can push the water a lot harder so if i didn't have those in here it just kick everything up in the tank that keeps everything from kicking up because it'll hit the bottom of that and then it'll disperse the water properly ah okay did you uh did you did you always have those or because those are pretty slick man are those i just design or what's the deal with those no you can get them i actually i got them from china off ebay really for like dollar 25 a piece or something like that but i think they're like four bucks here in the state oh dude buck 25 a pop that's not bad yeah and uh yeah i mean i didn't always have them it was just kind of due to necessity again whenever i was doing my water chain system and thinking about putting it together i'm like if i really because when you're maintaining so many tanks flow rate and how fast you can fill and empty the tanks are so it's so important it's everything, so dude. important it's everything yeah, so if I could flow it faster, I was like, I need something to catch it. I used to put rocks on the bottom where I'd put my python, and it'd hit the rock, and then it wanted to kick stuff up so much. And then that kind of gave me the idea if I could put something at the end of it that would catch the water and help disperse it, then that was what I came up with. Dude, I'll tell you, I was talking to the, I was talking to the city about uh, getting a water line cut or whatever. And they were like, well, you only need like three, three quarter. We only run, you, you only need a, a one inch diameter. And I was like, well, how big you got? She's like, well, we got two inch. And like, I'm trying to get this water line cut or whatever. And she's like, well, you don't need that. And I was like, lady, I was like, <laughs> I, was like I don't want to be like me either. But I was like, hold on now. I was like, you I need my flow to, rate. Yeah. I was like, you ever tried to fill like 2000 gallons in like a half hour? Like, you know, I need it. I want to, I'll be, I'll be willing to dial it back. Instead of like, you know, because if you're choked out from the main, that's not that's not coming in there. So, right. Um, and that's actually one thing I'm battling big time right now. I finally found the limits to my utilities. Oh, yeah. Especially with my water heater. So like water changes like right now, these are kind of dingy. I mean, they don't look bad, but to me, they're not where I want right. them to be. It's because I haven't been able to do water changes the way I want to because my water heater won't keep up. So I'm actually having to put in a tankless water heater and all that just to dude, be able to. It'll change your life, dude. Yeah, I hope so. Dude, I let hope me, so. Let me tell you about them inline <laughs> in water heaters, man. I went and I researched that, and that's one of those projects. If y'all, if y'all are enjoying this, by the way, can we get a like or a share? Because I'm about to drop some science, and you know, Lucas is bringing it. So thanks everybody checking this out, um, dude. Those inline water heaters, man. So I was running. I was running when I first set up the greenhouse in the backyard. I was running a hose from my kitchen sink out 50 yards into the greenhouse. And you can imagine the old lady, how she felt about that. Oh, that's commitment. Uh, dude, that was, it, was, it was Brian used to do it with me too. He was like, dude, what are you doing? So <laughs> when we redid our house, I got a, I got a trench dug and we put power out there and we put a uh, power out there and we put a, um, I, I put power out and I dug a water line. And when I did the water line, I paid an electrician to come and, uh, Dude, I got a stable Eltron, and that's not a promotion. Like, the thing is just the shit. I mean, it's bomb. It's a stable, and I don't know, other brands are probably good too. But man, I can take a, a Murdoch pump and like pull that thing. And we're talking, and I was asking the guy on the phone, I was like, how many gallons per minute is this thing? And it's like, like I don't know. It's it's a lot. I mean, it takes a lot, and it heats the water. The best part of the, when you when you finally get one is that they they're made to run hot. 
so like they're made to run like your lowest like the like lukewarm in like a, a shower so you got to cut them back so you can actually have more flow so you have like your hot and then you have your cold and you cut the hot cuz you don't want to be running 86 degrees cuz they're the bottom temperature of those settings is like 86 so you can hit it with like like right now you got you know Indiana cold water and you can like adjust it and then it'll come out right at the temperature you want man and they're set to like not have like a this one was set to not have like a drop cuz it's like it's a constant feed so it'll change your game, dude. When you get it in my water heater, it's it's on. That's so. nice. So you don't have to keep changing it and switching it as the temps change. No, you don't have to do nothing, man. The, the, the uh, water see. hits at a certain because, like, so right now, dude, I'm in here, two twenty, same deal. Algae, like, like not 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 loving it because, I mean, I do twenty five percent water change in here. You know, that's fifty gallons. That's my entire tank. My tank goes down. It's done. Old lady's doing laundry. It's over. Like I can't do it. So this right. inside tank. So now I'm spoiled because I go out in the greenhouse and I just like turn the knob, pull the tube, and whoosh, and it's just gushing water everywhere. I mean, Josh, dude, Josh makes my yard look like a thing. But um, yeah, man, when you get an inline water heater, get a big one, and they're uh, they'll change your game. So I have to run you a line from the greenhouse to inside. <sighs> yeah, so I got to run outside now. I just what I would do. Well, that's the that's the problem. When I did it, I had to to pass the plumbing inspection. My uh, my dude, we have a pipe that's like an old school house, so we have like a drain in our basement that just drains to like the yard. And he's like, "This ain't up to code, bro." So he's like, "We're gonna act like this doesn't exist." I'm like, "All right." So he did that. Well, then when he came back, he like, I don't know, ghetto connected it up at the top, and it's like all so my sink sucks down here now. So it's like my greenhouse like went like 10x better, and then like my actual like where I keep my design tanks is like just shot so i got some i don't know i'm gonna have to get it i'm gonna have to break down and buy myself a little inline water heater for down here but anyway they're they're fun but hey speaking of water though man you got like the most ridiculous ro unit i've seen too you got a big boy with that talk about that a little bit yeah it's 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 pretty nice it almost runs like tap water it's a three thousand gallon a day ro system injection rates about two to one it's not too bad it's actually the only thing i can use right now because i can't trust my tap water why can't you trust your tap water because the temps or because of the stuff coming in there's something coming in it every time i the reason why i built this whole water system was i was having issues with it and then i figured our our town is actually redoing their water line so they're probably kicking rust in it and all kinds of other stuff and oh. every time i did a water change with it my fish would come up with columnaris or something from the water quality being poor and oh uh, last time I used it, it killed a bunch of fish, and just because I tried to force just the tap water, and yeah, it wasn't good. So you're telling me that all the water you're bringing into your tanks these days has to go through some sort of secondary filtration beyond the city? Yeah, right now it does. I'm actually getting ready to set up something. I'm going to set up a UV sterilizer, another carbon blaster, and another pre-filter to my tap line. So then I'll get my flow back. Once I get that tankless water heater in as well, so it's going to look even crazier as far as that corner of. You're going to have an inline uh, water heater to an RO unit. To what was the other part of it? Well, the RO unit it will be separate. separate. So right. I'll, I'll I'll have the RO unit where it's just coming out at zero all the time, and then okay. with the tap line, it'll have another carbon blaster pre filter. So it'll probably come in at like a hundred, hundred fifty or so. I'm not sure. But that way, I'll still have both types of water, and I'll get more flow right. Trying to do it with just an RO system, I'm just ripping through water. like It's, oh, dude. it's unmanageable. With, what do you do with your wastewater huh? with that? What do you do with your wastewater? It goes into my sump pump because it's right there. Oh. Like They do have like RO buddies you can get to recycle it through, which the unit I have already has a recycler on it. But there are other systems you can to redo it, but the stuff that gets ejected from mine, it really wouldn't be worth it. It's nothing good? No. Nah. And you'd really want to use. But this whole fish room, it used to be like all these tanks used to be hard water. I pretty much went to RO water, straight RO, just That's crazy. flip the switch on everything and talk about stressful and wondering if something's going to happen, you know, because all these fish were used to a certain type of water. And automatically, you got to start switching them back over to something softer. And I tell you what, I was really surprised and happy how well everything came out. I didn't really lose anything from it, which is really surprising. 
what was your catalyst behind that? What were you thinking about doing? Why were you thinking about doing that? Better water control? What was that you were like, I'm a hard water, I'm going to go to softer water. Like, what was your, why would, why I had to because I couldn't trust the tap water. Oh, what I, was right. coming through the tap water was the hard water, which I miss my hard water Just so much oh, because man. it actually has minerals and everything in it that my plants do like, like the calcium, magnesium, and some other stuff, iron and whatnot. And now, now I have to dose all that, which makes more work for me to dose all so you gotta the ferts and minerals and stuff. And rebuild it, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Dude, so I've been, that's the thing. So I've been, uh, so I, I have like a, I don't know. I have, I have beef with like when people get new people get in the hobby and people tell them they need to do RO, but they don't tell them that second step of like, oh, by the way, you got to build this water now. Because right. I was at, I remember I was at a pet store in Cincinnati. This was years ago, and this dude convinced this other dude that worked at shop to buy an RO unit for his planet tank. And I was like, "What? Like you're gonna you could tell this dude to get like worthless water and grow these plants?" And he wasn't like explaining the whole thing. So, but uh, if you re, you're rebuilding, so what do you remineralize with? Then you use the calcium, magnesium, or what else do you put in there? Uh, yeah, I usually do like a EI method. I'm I'm looking into the PPS method because I think that'll uh help me out a little more but right now i just like the csm plus b so i get all my iron and trace and traces and all that and then i have a uh, potassium nitrate potassium sulfate and then some phosphates and then i've got a gh booster that i use for after i put the ro water in there to add the calcium and salts back in but you got to be careful with that stuff well, i was going to ask you on the gh boost is that a sodium carbonate or what what is that um to be honest i'm not really sure well, dude, so here's the thing, man. I'm bringing these – these plants are coming in from Africa soon, wink, wink. And uh, so we run them, and, dude, they come in they come in hard water, man, and, and you can watch. I got a Hanna Instruments unit, and the pH just – you put them in, and they just eat everything, man. Oh, yeah? Water. So, yeah, so I got to, like, battle. So I got to battle the keeping the, the, the mineral content high because we're talking, you know, 500 plants in a tank, and it's like – they just like come in and they're hungry and they're like, and they suck everything out. So I'm trying to, I'm going to try with uh, sodium bicarbonate to raise the, raise the, keep the pH high. And then uh, I don't want to be chasing minerals. So I'm going to run a lot of potassium nitrate and uh, calcium or uh, sodium carbonate to keep that, keep that pH up. Sounds like those would be good plants for like tetra breeders and whatnot to drop that pH down, kind of like sphagnum moss does. Well, it's, it's not so much if like, I mean, I, I I like where your head's at. The problem is it's so many, so it's not like each one of the plants isn't that strong, you know? Because mm. they're like, but like if it was like, like pound for pound, it's not that many. But the fact that they're just so condensed that it's like, and they're hungry because they're coming in boxes, right? Free, you know what I'm saying? So Feed me, Seymour. Yeah, they're just like <laughs> they just suck everything in. Yeah. So, uh, but that's a fun thing. We got the crenum coming in. We're gonna you got the cream, so we're gonna have the. Uh, they're going to get their own. This is this is fun, actually. Um, so this is like my part of the import. So Josh does the bulbitis and the anubius, and then I get the crenum. And uh, we got them set up in these 40. We got 40 longs drilled, and uh, we're going to run them in about this much water, and we're going to run them in uh, uh, crushed coral because they're going they come from a harder water. So we're going to run them in real hard water, and then I got a 400-watt metal halide just just, just bait. I mean, dude. The Blast them. Oh, dude, they're going to get hit, man. So, and those plants hate being moved, but I can't wait because I'm going to, I'm going to, I can, I can, I've said this before. I can watch them grow. Like I can like sit there and I can put them in the halide and I can hit the potassium and I'm just like, Broop, just, just, so. You ever try a time lapse on them? Dude, you know, I, uh, well, as you and every, all of you watching know, I suck at, uh, at, uh, technology. I had, <laughs> I listened to this. I bought a, I bought an $1,800 camera. Like 4K, the whole deal, last year. It was like, maybe even two years ago, like a long time ago. And my dude that just started editing for me came over, and I was like, dude, I don't know how to use this thing, man. Like, just, and he was like, oh, hold up. And he was just like, blip, 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 and like flipped it, and then all of a sudden, like, I can do 4K video. So the answer is no, but I'd like to. So now I got the technology. I probably should because that would be pretty cool to just sit and watch Cranham grow. I don't even think you need to do 4K for that, but it would look, it would look cool seeing it like, you know, coming out and like the little veins and all that. So all right. actually a pretty good idea. That would be cool. Dude, we've been talking for a minute now. We haven't even talked about uh, 
about rainbows at all. I got to go there with you. Um, got to go to the rainbows. I got, I got to go there, man. I got to go there. I did the Rainbow Fish remix the other day. Click, click around. Check that out. Um, what? Uh, when did you start keeping rainbows, man? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Shoot, I don't know. Probably maybe about six years ago. Yeah. I really got into them. And then I got on a Facebook and I joined a group. And they gave me so much crap about having these store-bought ones. I mean, me. Then they showed me where the real rainbows were. <laughs> All the rare like ones. And then I was hooked. Yeah. Man. And that was a couple of years ago. And then I... Sh- I just started buying all the rare ones I could, just that I like, like the colors I like. I draw towards the blue ones a lot. Dude, I, uh, Most of them came from Gary. Oh, man, his rainbows are, it's not even, like, you know, I've never seen anybody with, like, 25% of cool as rainbows as his. Eric Bodrock's got some good ones, too. I've got you a know, few off of him. I have heard of him. I've never, I don't know if I've ever met him. I have heard that he has some amazing fish. What's his setup like? Oh, he's a cool dude. He's a nice setup. Uh, I actually got a video tour oh, of nice. his setup and his wife's setup. So he, he's got a setup down in his basement, and then his wife has a whole setup of her own in, in the basement. And they're, they're real cool people. You mean to tell real me cool that, chill that, people. That, that husband and wife get along and have the hobby together? Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's you don't hardly ever see that. No, man. I tell you what, I have seen it once before, and it was it was brutal. And it's uh, <laughs> it, was, it was Debbie and Tom out in uh, out in, uh, in in Missouri. You ever been out to the Missouri club? I think I've seen Debbie and Tom's. It's one big room. One big room in the basement. Yeah. And shout outs to all you ladies who let your men keep the keep the tanks, and and, and the men who get along with the women with it. Um. So they have a you need first of all every single one of you watching this, the Missouri Aquarium Society is one of the best in the country, and I don't know it's because I don't and I'm not in a club or I don't have a local club, I mean there's something in Louisville but I don't go up there, um, and man Gary Lang took me there and they were the last stop but Debbie and Tom is a couple, and they're real into cichlids so I mean you know everybody's got their own thing, but man that Missouri Aquarium Society dude their auction like put it this way I almost drove six hours to go to their auction because it's just like. Gary's bringing rainbows, and that guy Chuck Chuck Bramer. He, I did videos with him. He's got like oh yeah, I saw that set up. Dude, That's nice, dude. I spent ten minutes outside of his place looking in his like little pools, and he was like, "Come in here." Like I wasn't even like in his house yet, and then like I went into his house, and I was like, "Huh." I did. I, I have like I have like some extra footage of him too. I need to like get that out. But um, so yeah, when you get that, when you get but but to the point though, when you get that 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 couple. Because uh, I was talking to Debbie about it. She's like, yeah, she's like, yeah, that's the problem. Because like when you talk to your spouse and they're like, oh, I don't know. And he's just like, go for it. Like, <laughs> so they're like, they'll just be at an auction. Like, we're getting discus. Like, we don't even have a tank. Like, that doesn't matter. And like, and they just do it. So, right. You'll figure it out. That happens all the time. That's how you get more tanks. That's how the MTS kicks in Dude. right there. Dude, I'll tell you right now, man. They tell Chuck Bramer, man. I never, I was not into live bears at all. I was like, can I look at him? I got this pineapple up here. I got a. Another is a phosphorus around in here, and man, I went to his house and I was like, "Those are fat." And he was like, "He was." I mean, you know, you see, you see somebody that's breeding their own stuff, and you're like, "Oh, so that's what it looks like." You know what I mean? When you see that, and you're like, "Oh, I got it." Like that's that's the species because you know you look at the pet store, and then you got like, "Yeah, I've been breeding these for a couple of years," type stuff. So that's how it starts. Right, man. right. That's what got me into life. But I do. I, I gotta stop you for a second. So there's right. a lot of talk about your mic not being loud enough. My girl just texted me saying, I'm super loud and you're kind of quiet. So, wow. well, that ain't going to work. Got to make the crowd happy. Hey, man. <laughs> What's oh, that? Yeah. Got to break them off some. Here we go. All right. Let me turn. Technology's always giving us hard times. It's getting better. Let me, let me, let me microphone check you. Thanks for doing that, dude. Microphone check one. No one problem, two. problem. Dude, there's a girl in here. I don't know if she's in the thing. She was doing the Beastie Boys with me. Is this better? Finally better? Is that better? Hello, hello. It sounds hello. the same to me, but Christy, hey, can I get a one if it's better? Can I say there one, you go. one, one, one. Come on, Dustin, get with the times. Hey, yeah, I'm fixing my mic. You want me to be good at fish tanks? You want me to be good at technology? What you want? Sounds the same. Uh, <laughs> can't okay. have them both. Don't be You're greedy. Getting both. You're not getting both. <laughs> it ain't getting both. Should I just speak up? Same zero. Yeah, maybe. Zero. Oh man. 
Negative one. <laughs> how, did, how did it get worse? Did, it, did I just start? I don't know. Start whispering or something? Maybe I should whisper. This is how I'm gonna mess everything up too. All right, volume. Adjust your audio level. Ooh, turn it up. Is that better? Turn it up. Warm it up. Hello. How's that? Is that better, everybody? Put the mic closer. Move the mic closer to your mouth. Oh, there you go. That sounds a lot better, better? right there. I just. Well, when you had it closer to like your mouth. Stupid thing. Yeah, you're gonna have to like chew on it or something. Yeah, Everybody here does <laughs> gnawing on it. Lost sound. One better. Getting better. Good. I'll just talk. There we go. That's the thing. So you know what it is. Thanks. <laughs> Everybody put a one. It's better. Christy, is it better? Good. Good. You know what it is. I'm talking. But yeah, about. I'd like. I'd love to go to that Missouri auction. I've been trying to get Gary to let me over there because I want some of his macalosis. Yeah. Dude, that dude took me all around St. Louis in one day. That that that, that club, man. I'm telling you, I, I you go there and it's like you're you're talking to people that have been to Peru multiple times, multiple people. Um, the Mass like the Mass like club is real strong. I was really, really. I don't know what it is. If it's like so central and like remote or whatever. Uh, I went out to the American Libraries Association. They put on the thing out there. That was that was insane, man. I got so many fish. Like I went out there. And it was cool because I was, I mean, I was shooting videos, but I wasn't like, you know, I was like, I just, I was like, Hey, I'm coming. Like I wasn't, you know, I wasn't involved. I was just like, I'm going to be here and buy a bunch of stuff. And like, I got that dude. And I mean, I got all kinds of fish. So they have just, and they had a, they had a, they have a rare fish auction. Check this out. They have a rare fish auction that you got to buy. Uh, you got to buy admittance to, and it's first come first pick. So like you have to pay and you have to be in order to pay like, when they open the like the selling of the tickets, you have to be first, and whoever comes first gets to buy first. So it's like it's like a hog. Why it's it's a really cool thing, and I didn't even get to like see half of those fish because they were gone. But uh, nice they, they, was yeah, that the was, Live Bear Association or the Missouri Association? But it was the it was the Missouri Aquarium Society put it on, and nice. um, and they yeah and they uh so they had like a rare fish just like sale that was like you had to pay to be in the room and then you had an order in which you paid you got to buy your fish so i mean you're talking like you know f1 everything's and just really uh really really cool so um i want to talk Sounds about like rainbows. my auction oh dude it's great i want to talk about rainbows because i'll tell you um i don't know about you but man when i i, I got into rainbows because there was this dude timmy at uh old toothless timmy at just fish and he uh he had uh Dude, he had he he was talking about it, but he was that dude that like always knew his fish like too good, you know, and um, and he had uh, he was like, man, I had this these rainbows back in the day, and he was like, I'm telling you, you got to grab some of these, and I didn't really think much of it, and I was like, all right, whatever, and I think I grabbed a couple from him, and man, when I got them home after like a week, they colored up, and I immediately went on a rainbow bender, like I was like, all right, I'm getting that, I'm getting that, I'm getting that, and I was fortunate at my local fish store, uh. Shout outs to uh, Animal House. I don't go there much, but Animal House, the guy there has a has a knack for rainbows. And they had a bunch of them. And man, I got hooked hard. Like I actually That's just a good name for a fish store. Just, yeah, uh, was Animal House and Just Just Fish. Yeah. Uh, just Fish. Oh right. no, Animal House. Animal, Animal House, yeah. No, there yeah. there was a, was a wild wild place too. So <laughs> I got into I got into rainbows there, man, and I never looked back. I had them in here. I had them breeding in uh just the hitting the big water changes, but I want to talk about how you've, uh, how you, you know, you've bred some rainbows. You got any tips for breeding rainbows? So what I usually do is I just play musical fish. I know a lot of people use spawning mops and all that and just pull the mops. But since I don't have, well, I have MTS and collectoritis really bad. So it's hard for me to keep species only tanks. So what I'll do is I'll pull my groups out of my communities. Then I'll jump them through a couple of tanks and that way, when I move the fish, because, I mean, they're they're scattering eggs all day long. So I'll leave them in there for a couple of weeks, and then I'll pull them out, and then you'll just have a whole cloud of fry everywhere. So and you just move them? feed them from there. Yeah, I just play musical fish. I move them. Will you take, like, a male and a female and put them in a tank and then move them to another tank? Or will you, like, put one male with this girl and then, like, move him over and, I mean... It- I'll, I'll usually try to do a trio. If I got a trio, I'll do a trio. That way he's not always chasing that one female because they are jumpers, and a lot of my tanks don't have lids. But you can train them not to jump. You They'll tell their buddies tell, not to tell jump, them. too. Tell but them, yeah, oh, you, for real? They warn a yeah. brother? <laughs> <laughs> 
like, nah, yeah, man, hold them, this ain't it. <laughs> they will. They'll tell them. They will warn the brother. But so you, you hold them out of the water for that? a little while, and they'll realize that it sucks to be out of water. And it's like, I don't know. It's like they go in and tell everybody else, and nobody <laughs> else will jump. It's so weird, but it works. Dude, it's like, uh, it's like, it's like my theory on the plecos, man. Like, you know, you take a rainbow fish out of water and you let them know and they're like, all right, no, like we're not, we're not, we're not, I'll go, I won't go out of the water. It's like, that's my theory. It's like similar to my theory on plecos. Like you just don't mess with the plecos. Like they run the bottom and that's it. Like set them and forget them. (laughs) Nah, son, the bottom is his now. (laughs) That's the thing with the, uh, the, the plecos, but the. Damn it! I wish I would have known that tip, man, because I bought some Darwin rainbows from Mike De Niro, who's uh, friends with Rachel O'Leary and all that. And uh, this was back in the day. And man, I had five of them, and I, I lost one every like six months because I just come down and be on the floor. So they spawn though, which was cool. And I uh, the Darwin way I, rainbows. Yeah, th- yeah, that's a that's a junk name. He uh, he asked mm-hmm. them. He, I asked him what they were, and he didn't know. And thanks to the wonderful YouTube channel. Um, I put them up there, and they were like, "Those are Melatonea Fredericis." So they were, oh Fred yeah, Ricky. yeah. So they got the they got the little uh, black, and those are some hot rainbows, man. I wish I still had my hands on those. That's the one thing. That's another thing I love about YouTube and doing this kind of thing is the community in here. Even like nobody knows it all in this hobby. You could do this hobby for a hundred years and still be learning something new every day. But just having the community here, they can you can ask them. It's it's a give give. It's they're awesome. Dude, I'll I tell you, I'll tell you that it, that is crazy because you get, man, I, uh, <clears throat> when you want to know something with the, with the fish tank community, dude, it's amazing. Cause, and this is what I love about people seeing people's fish rooms too, but particularly you know, in YouTube, man, I had a dude, uh, hit me up talking about how to propagate Krenum and, uh, and it was like, I, f- I wish I knew his name and he was telling me about how you side cut the, uh, Krenum calamistratum and you side cut it and if you cut in like a certain amount it'll automatically like propagate out and i was just like what and then i had uh i had i had that guy and then i had another uh, what was the other what was the other some, something else that blew my mind what was it it was something i don't know it was you know i mean there's so many like different different images, but everybody has their like little tiny like like things that they just like know like way well oh no that was the other thing i was talking you ever heard of julian sprung I haven't. All right, so Julian. All right, so Julian sprung, and he's not an R. He's not our flavor. He's a he's a renowned saltwater guy. I want I want to just see something real quick here. Anybody, any salt keepers, hit one if you know who Julian sprung is. Can I get a one in the chat? Care? So Julian sprung. Come on, give me give me some. So Julian sprung is like this uh, this hardcore um, this hardcore salt guy, right? So I'm an AE, you know, and you know how aquatic experience is, man. You can't breathe. And we start shooting a doo-doo about Krenum. And, uh, and we're just talking and whatever. And he's like, well, I don't have my phone on me. I'll be back. And again, this is saltwater dude, right? Like, and he's got his own uh, something for Two Little Fishes is the name of his brand. And uh, he comes back and he's like, yeah, here's how I, here's how I flowered Krenum Tyanum. And I'm like, what? So he's like got this picture and it's like tank is like half drained down. And he's got this like crazy, like, a, like close to the size of this one. Um, and it's got like these flowers and, you know, he's a salt dude and we're just sitting there he's like, yeah, I lowered it down. Excuse me. I, as I burp in the mic, you hear that? Uh, yeah, he's like, I lowered it down. TDS raised, um, da, da, da. And, uh, like, that's how I got it to flower. And, you know, I mean, like, you don't, you don't get that. Like, I don't know. That's why one of the reasons I love shows is cause I get to like talk, like I get to have that extra level of like you know, nerdiness, like, like, oh, we're going to, me and you are going to talk about credit for about a half hour. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't get that. Um, not in person anyway. So yeah, man, everybody's got their own little, uh, their own little vein, their own little thing. And let me ask you this, man, what's some of the craziest, like in, in, into a niche thing you've seen with the fish tank people, you know, like oh, you know as far I mean? as niches. Yeah. Just oh, like, there's so many niches. It's hard to really pinpoint ones, especially like the killifish people. Oh, that's a good one. Big time. Yeah. Those AKA, which actually we need more killifish keepers because most of them are older now. Not a lot of people get into it like they do. Yeah, that's a good call. I think that same way about the library community, man, because I was one of the youngest. Uh, I was one of the youngest dudes there. And uh, I was like, oh, man. Yeah, you, 
Y'all are. You'd be surprised. <laughs> I don't know. I think live bears is still hot. Like it always kind of has been. Ah man, I went. All right, let me, let me put you this way: where I, at that show, there was not a lot of young people there. Like, and I was just like, huh? And 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 they knew that too. The guy Chuck, who's in charge, who was running it, he he knew that too. He was aware of that. But um, I want to talk about keely fish though, man, because that's a fish that you don't see very much. And aren't most of those annuals? Like, don't most of them are just breed once and they're done? They're well, right. no, no, and, no. As far as annual, like they'll keep breeding out. It's just their lifespans aren't that long. Oh, now you get into fun to pan checks and stuff like that, like the blue glars, golden winter killies, like they'll live for a few years, but like the ranchovies and stuff like that, they'll only live for a little over a year, depends on the care. But in the wild, they're naturally annual, so they'll have their wet and dry right. season. But in the aquarium, they'll live a lot longer. Dude, I saw the blue glars at, uh, the dude Tory Brown's house out in out in Colorado, and he took a flashlight to that thing, and I was just like, "What? Like, cause those are a hot Keeley, blue Galaris. If y'all want to look up something, yeah. look up blue Galaris. That's cool." I'm surprised you didn't see the ones in my fish room. I actually have Did one you... from Robert Meyer, who's the I... chairman of the AKA, and his one best show a couple of years back. For real? Where where were they in your room? Yeah, ah, dude, I, you're. It's they were hard. out in the back corner in the garage, so it's it's easy to miss stuff. I've had people that's been here like five times, and I'll post something up like, "Where was that at in your fish room?" Just because there's so many tanks, it's hard to see it all. I was uh, I was talking to a guy, the John Gerber at Gerber's Tropicals. You ever been there? No, Gerber's? I haven't. I have talked to a guy from there. Dude, you need to I think to go that's there. up by Rob, ain't it? Dude, it's not. No, it's not far from you, man. Gerber's is not far from you at all. Because you live on the you live on the east side of Indy, and you go down you go down seventy five or cut over on Dayton, and it's not far from you at all. It's you in know, Ohio, right? Yeah, but it's but it's 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 just south of Dayton. It's not far from you. Uh, it's probably Ooh, maybe I have to make a stop by. Dude, we should roll roll up in there. But um, he's uh he's because I'm actually going to flips. Nice this dude. weekend. I need to see his uh, his setup, man. I know he's been redoing everything. I hear good yeah, things. He's set, yeah, he's putting quite a setup up. I saw the shrimp. I was like, dude, I gotta get some of them black roses from you, <laughs> dude. He's he's blowing up, man. I'm glad. I'm glad to see him changing up. I actually, um, yeah, I need to get I need to get up there and check it out too. But yeah, if, I don't know if the date date night is probably not on directly on the way, but. Uh, but yeah, Gerber, Gerber's is a good one. What well, I, I had a point. Oh yeah, he go his shop. He has the same type of thing where you go in there and you don't know. Like you'll go in there and he'll be like, "Make sure you check." He he went. I went in there one time and he was like, "Dustin's into pistos," and he told his employees like, "Make sure he sees the pistos because they were like, you know, he's got like a bajillion tanks and um they were like you know tucked back in." So that's that's one of the questions I actually advise all of you fish tank people to do is when you go into a shop that's crazy. Um, ask them like, where's the weird stuff, you know? Cause they might have some like little, little fish in the corner that you don't know that you want real, you might want, or, you know what I mean? Cause they know where the stuff is. So that's, that's some advice I'd like to tell everybody like, or spend your time and look at every single tank. That way yeah, you exactly. know what to find. That's my favorite thing about going into a fish store is finding the oddballs, like something I ain't seen. Even if I've been in that fish store a hundred times, I'll look at every single tank cause you never know when they'll stick something weird in a tank. And you find it. I had a dude named yeah. uh, Rajan, and I picked up a uh, an al at a coolie loach. It wasn't albino, but it just had the coolie loach head, and the rest of it was the coolie pink. So the back. Oh, gnarly! Oh, yeah, I still got him, man. He's in here somewhere. But uh, he was like, "Yo, man, you got to get this coolie loach," and I was like, "Oh." So definitely fun. So you got any? Uh, what? What? You got anything planned, man? You got anything going on? You going up to flips? You, what? You got anything like fish room stuff you're doing? You got any travels you're doing? Oh, uh, there's always fish room stuff I'm doing, like every day, like, trying to get that water system done. Just getting breeding shrimp going, all that stuff. Traveling up to Rob's here soon. I got a new filter, which I rarely run filters, but yeah. it's not a mechanical filter. I, I would tell you what it is, but that's going to be a video coming out soon. All right, keep it. On it's the about the most natural forward. filter you could use and get. You might be able to guess. Most natural filter you can get. Yeah. <laughs> I won't guess. I'm not trying to. Trying to. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not trying to. It's not a under. I'm probably not an under gravel filter. No. No, no, no pieces or parts. It's living. Okay. I'll let everybody. I'll let everybody guess. I'm not gonna try to guess and sound stupid. Um, 
Along along the same lines of that, though, I do want to talk about the way you keep uh, you keep colonies of shrimp with a big pile of rocks. Can you kind of talk about that? Because I remember checking that out in that room with the the I think they were the blues. Yeah. Okay. So for shrimp, it's really important, especially if you're wanting to breed them out, that they they love to have peace and quiet and a nursery. So a lot of reasons why people keep moss is the females will make little nurseries in that moss. Well, the rock piles is pretty much the same situation. The only thing is the rock pile can't get moved by water changes. Ah. So always be a settled place where the shrimp can actually keep a nursery and breed out without having to worry about being disturbed. I got you. So in And the- it also gives them a safe place to keep away from fish eating them and whatnot. Yeah, and I and then what what percentage of your tank? I mean, I've seen the setup, but can you kind of describe how you do that? Like what size rocks and how big of a pile and that kind of thing? It really depends. I mean, you could just do like the corner of like the back of the tank. Now, if you have a tin on its side, you could do the whole back. It all depends. It's, it depends on how big you want the nursery to be. I would recommend it to not make it too big because a lot of those piles they can collect detritus and a bunch of mom and gum and all that and cause issues but now are you talking just like broken up lava rock or what do you i mean i saw the one and it looked like it was broken up uh not lava rock but uh what is that river know. rock yeah river rock is that what it was yeah you could use river rock lava rock whatever rock that won't really harm anything most rocks there's a lot of information about people thinking that there's a lot of rocks that will harm tanks but i have never come across a rock that does unless like say you got a really calcium heavy rock in a soft tank that maybe the i don't know most most soft fish don't mind the calcium these days especially with coming from seacrest and other places like that Dude, uh, so i want to i want to make a point on that too i feel the same way man i'll drop i'll drop rocks in man i didn't i didn't rinse these i had nothing i got these off you know an undisclosed location and everyone's like oh those are gonna kill you they ain't killing your fish like i put so many rocks in tanks i mean there's a chance you know like i don't want anybody somebody put some crazy rock in and it kills their fish i'm sorry but like i'm with you on that man like you put it in there if you want to if you want to boil it first you know knock yourself out but that's uh you know i I, i'm with you and, and and that's coming you're saying that from a shrimp from a shrimp dude too so you you haven't like ever really messed with your cal your uh your ph or anything putting like lime rock in it with shrimp or never really- no see ph i don't know to me ph don't really mean a whole lot because that's okay. really per hydrogen and i've <laughs> i battled ph so much trying to breed tetras and whatnot chasing that low ph <sighs> and i've seen it get so crazy all over the place when tds is actually way more important than any of your ph yeah. so your gh cage is the most important which is a collective of tds yeah do you uh you have any tips on raising gh and kh we talked about this earlier i uh, just using calcium as far as kh kh isn't really nest well i'm not going to say it's not really necessary because some people do try to pinpoint ph's Right. So I don't know. I don't really believe in that much because, like I mentioned, I turned all these tanks from hard water to soft water with no issues. I didn't even test pH. I don't. I, I never was, test pH. I was gonna say, like, I don't. I don't test it either. How? I mean, you, you're saying they're soft. Are they just below seven, or are they like like? Six yeah, something? soft. And well, when I say soft, that's the TDS, the GH, and the KH combined. Okay. So most tap waters, if if they're not real acidic, because I know some people have soft tap water, they'll have kh and gh which your kh is your bicarbonates and your gh is like your calcium and all that that you need mm-hmm. then the tds is a combination of both right the total so i usually just out. yeah i usually just check the tds what do you and that's how i TDS? really run all my tanks so i used to run them at 400 plus right then my city tap water started coming in at 330 and now, since I had to start using my RO system, they're all like 100, 120 something. Wow, that's low. Yeah, yeah. So it was a big switch. And I didn't lose anything. Dude, it was I was almost getting, overnight. I was back last year, I was bringing in some shrimp, nothing fancy, fires or whatever. And man, they'd come in and I'd test the TDS and it'd be like 1,500. And yeah, I was having, I was having 300 out of the tap. And this is wow. a, like, 
nine o'clock at night just picked them up from the airport and i was just like this is for the birds dude like i'm not trying to, <laughs> I'm not trying to make this water and i was like that's why there's no shrimp available on dustinsfishtanks.com at this time because i just i that's had it crazy 1500 how do you even get that high? dude i don't even know i i and I, I was like testing it twice and it was like and then I, you know i'd lose a ton of them and so i don't, I don't even i don't even I don't even know. I don't. I was like, I was confused as to how that was even happening. And then sometimes I'd get like a bag of these fires, and I'd get a bag of these cherries. And the cherries would come in at like four hundred, and then this one, you know, those would lose those and whatever. So, but speaking of selling shrimp, man, where can people get some stuff from you? Okay, so I have people ask me all the time to get stuff from me, and often uh, right now I have a Patreon, so my Patreons get first dibs. There you go. Right now, I haven't been able to make it through my Patreons yet, so a lot of my stuff on my site is out of stock. But if you want to check out my site, it is lrbaquatics.com. I have people message me all the time. I prefer if people don't ask me like when stuff's going to be in stock because I can't keep up with waiting lists and all that. And I'm just yeah, going to refer you to my Patreon. So, yeah, since everything's home bred, it's in real high demand. That's tight, dude. Very tight. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Well, it's been good shooting a duty with you, man. Glad we got to do this. I've uh, been looking to get it. I'm sorry. I was trying to get a DJ to, like, mix in some 90s <laughs> rap for the intro and the outro. Dude, you should have t- told me, man. I would have broke out the turntables. Man. Oh, you got turntables? <laughs> I used to. Dude, I had a, I had a, I had, I had a, I didn't have turntables, but I had a, I used to do the CDs. I had a Newmark mixer. I was having a dream about that the other night, man. Straight up. Nice. I, I used to have some Gemini's actual tables, yeah, the mixer nice. and stuff, and the Stanton. Dude, we need to get a we need to get a fish tank party going on, but that's another conversation. There you go. So. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, make sure you check out Mr. Lucas Bretz's channel, LRB Aquatics. I got that right. What's the YouTube name? It's, got it. Sure. LR Bretz Aquatics. LR Bretz Aquatics. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then uh, drop us a comment on what you think about this. And like we say, tank on, everybody. Yeah, tank on. Peace. We'll do it again, brother. Right on. Later. Later.